We're standing at about 6,000 feet elevation. Uh, we're on a spur ridge between Clingman's Dome and Andrews Bald, the Forney Ridge Trail. And this is a great example of a spruce fir stand, which is our highest elevation cover type in the southern Appalachian Mountains. It's dominated by only two species, red spruce, Picea rubens, and Fraser fir, Abies Fraser. Um, red spruce you can spot, there's one I'm moving to the left over here, you can move the lens uh, on these 3D videos. You can see right here, this is a red spruce, and you can spot it by the reddish bark. Uh, there are also Fraser firs in here as well, I see several over there. Um, Fraser fir is a higher elevation species compared to red spruce. You'll get Fraser fir on the very tops of the mountains where it's exposed, very harsh climate, uh, and you're getting, you know, 6,000 feet and over. Um, down to about 4,000 feet, you can pick up the occasional red spruce. Really, it's more 4,500 feet and above. Uh, but red spruce can go a little lower in elevation than Fraser fir. Both these species are really shade tolerant. So if I look, uh, this little tree right here still has some live leaves on it. I'm moving over here to my right. And you can see there's live, uh, this looks like a Fraser fir, live Fraser fir sitting here in the understory just waiting until an opening comes up and it can take off and make it into the overstory. There are some hardwood associates in here. Um, I'm seeing two main ones in this spot that are pretty common. We do have some occurrence of yellow birch up here, Betula alleghaniensis. Um, and up over here, you see, you may be able to look up and see the leaves where it's clearly a compound leaf. That's gonna be mountain ash. Uh, mountain ash is not related to ash at all. It's actually in the Rosaceae family, uh, Sorbus americanus. So it's closer related to cherries, kind of. Um, other things to note as we look around here, this is a temperate rainforest. We're getting 80 plus inches of rain a year here, and so it's also cold because we're at high elevation. So if you look down at the forest floor, standing here, it's real springy. Um, there's a really thick layer of duff, um, of litter on the ground. You're gonna have low decomp rates off our coniferous species as well, because high tannin and other contents, high C to N ratio. So they just don't break down easily. But then throw in cold weather and this much water and decomp rates slow way down. If we talk about disturbances up here, let's start with the natural disturbances. This is not an ecosystem that would typically burn unless you had a really, really severe drought. Um, there are two primary natural disturbances that would really define these ecosystems. We're seeing some mortality up here. Um, what you would tend to find is wind throw. I'm seeing a top broken out of a tree over here. Uh, you can see it hanging down there. That's actually a, a birch. It looks like the top's broken out of. Um, so wind throw would take down, you know, ballpark, maybe 10% of the land area every decade is what you see in similar ecosystems in the northeastern United States. The other major one here is ice. You'll get ice accumulations. Uh, the conifers are well adapted to snow and ice. They have narrow crowns, kind of like a steep roof that's going to shed snow, shed ice to the extent that they can. So they're well suited to it. The hardwoods, maybe not quite as much. Um, and then coupled with that, you will get some native insects, uh, different pine beetles that'll come in here and, and do some damage. Not pine beetles, sorry, but bark beetles uh, that'll, that'll cause some damage here. So that's sort of the typical natural disturbance regime you would expect up here. Um, there have been a lot of anthropogenic effects. Uh, back in the late 1800s, early 1900s, settlers cleared um, about half the acreage of spruce fir forests. So we're down to about half. The half we have left is almost all on national forest, national parkland, so it's all protected now for the most part. No one's actively logging these cover types today. But the other major impact we've seen is a non-native insect from Europe, the balsam woolly adelgid, a small aphid-like insect that was introduced in the 1950s. And it has come in, it really doesn't do much to red spruce at all, but it really has hit the Fraser fir very hard. Um, if you looked at that introductory video I showed you right up near Clingman's, I was in a very dense younger cohort because the older cohort had been completely wiped out or killed almost entirely by the balsam woolly adelgid. So you see a lot of mortality from this adelgid killing the Fraser firs. It hits the bigger trees when they're older. The younger trees uh, aren't seeing as much damage. And so no one knows really the future of Fraser fir. Um, is the insect population going to keep building up to the point it takes it out and extirpates it and basically maybe drives it to extinction? Um, are the younger trees going to get to reproductive maturity and create a new generation before they're killed by the adelgid? These are things that we don't really have answers to. Large-scale mortality started around here in the 80s, and because you're at such high elevation, short growing seasons, slow growth rates, this is all playing out over a very long time period. Um, these are ecosystems where if you have a tree that's 
two foot in DBH, like if you look directly behind us here, there's a really large red spruce right there, uh, maybe about 18 inch DBH. That tree could easily be 200 years older or older. Um, so the trees don't get to really massive, impressive sizes uh, to be pretty old up here because of the really harsh environmental conditions. Um, so these forests are very similar to what you would find throughout the boreal regions of the world. Um, most of Canada and Russia is dominated by white and black spruce and other firs like balsam fir. Uh, and so it would look very similar to that, probably a little flatter in most areas. But we have these relics, island top forests here in the southern Appalachians. Uh, Fraser fir is very closely related to balsam fir up in the northeastern U.S. Um, it probably differentiated allopatrically as it got geographically separated and was found only in these southern mountaintops. So beautiful cover types, great to hike through. Uh, no one's managing for these for timber anymore in, in this region. Um, good for wildlife. Uh, there are some endangered species that you'll find in these ecosystems. Moss spiders. You can look around me. You can look like right down here, if you follow me down here. There's dense layers of bryophytes. So you get lots of bryophytes around here, mosses. Uh, you get lots of epiphytes, lichens like this. And so really, uh, very interesting forest ecosystems.